Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that, having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders heads, the judges, and offices of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, long ago your ancestors, Tra and his son Abraham and Nor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 78, 
verses 1 through 7. We will read whole verse by whole verse responsibly in the last verse altogether. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in the parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children. That the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God, and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. The second reading is a letter from the first letter, Paul, to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. And all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us, 
you had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. While they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Then the kingdom of God will be like this. Your church shall have a wildly successful stewardship campaign in which all goals are met with minimal effort. There shall be no difference of opinion about how to spend the money, and each ministry will be fully funded. Everyone will have plenty of oil for their lamps. It will be obvious when the bridegroom will return, and no one will be the least bit surprised when he arrives. My translation seems to differ a little bit from the NRSV this morning. Maybe I should read that again. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. There we go. That sounds a little more realistic. That feels like a more accurate picture of the life of faith between Jesus' first coming as a human infant and his return in glory. It's not such a smooth ride, is it? So there are ten members of the wedding party. Each one of them, all of them, has received the official invitation and are headed toward the festivities as soon as the bridegroom arrives. Some of them try to be prepared for the unexpected, while others don't worry about it. The wise realize that nothing ever goes quite according to plan, and so they plan accordingly. The foolish trust that their customary good luck will hold, and that there will be no hiccups in the party plan. Either way, did you notice that all of them fall asleep because the bridegroom is delayed for reasons unknown? It seems that life intervenes and pushes back the beginning of the celebration. Nevertheless, the bridegroom eventually appears in the middle of the night. The bridesmaids who have prepared and brought extra oil join him and enter into the wedding banquet, while the ones who are without enough oil are left outside as they look for more. Jesus ends this parable by admonishing all of the bridesmaids because they all fell asleep. He says, keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. All right, so the day and the hour of what exactly? The late Robert Capon, Episcopal priest, theologian, and writer, writes that it's the day of Christ's returning and the final day when God will acknowledge that we have accepted God's invitation to relationship or we have rejected it. 
So it's a big day. It's the day when our connection with God will no longer be a maybe. It must be a yes or a no. Capon emphasizes, as I mentioned earlier, that every single person here, all the bridesmaids, have received the official invitation. It's not like no one, it's not like there's one person who's not invited to the wedding banquet. They all are. But the thing is, not all of them have been good stewards of their invitation. Okay, they all slip up and fall asleep, uh, even though they risk missing the bridegroom's entrance, but half of them have taken the invitation too lightly. They have basically done nothing to prepare for his arrival. The foolish bridemaids have, in effect, rejected the invitation by their inaction. This fairly stern warning in Matthew's gospel should cause us to ask how we can avoid having the door of the wedding feast shut firmly in our faces. I know that I don't want to hear the Lord say, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. So how then do we stay awake and be prepared as we wait for the full manifestation of the kingdom of God? I'm pleased to say that I believe the Episcopal branch of the Jesus movement has a lot to offer in answer to that question. For example, we can root our spiritual life in prayer and in the study of scripture simply by praying the daily office. We can receive grace and strength and unity by, rel rel by regularly celebrating the Holy Eucharist together. And as we work to keep the vows that we make in our baptismal covenant, we find that we love and serve others. And in doing that, we learn how to love our neighbors as ourselves. And finally, and I know you've all been waiting for it, to keep awake and prepared, we can seek to be good stewards of all that God has given us. As we celebrate this new Consecration Sunday today, it is fitting that we look a little bit deeper into what that stewardship might look like. As Father TJ and the Vestry know, I have been influenced in this area by the work of Henry Nouwen, the Dutch priest, writer, and theologian. He has much to say on the topic of stewardship and fundraising from a spiritual perspective, but today I'll focus only on three areas, prayer, gratitude, and community. Nouwen sees prayer as the radical starting point of stewardship because it reorients our thoughts and our feelings about ourselves and about others in our church. Through prayer, we open our hearts to the work of the Holy Spirit. We invite her to help us see ourselves and all those in our community as God sees us, beloved and indispensable in the kingdom of God. Prayer also changes our perspectives about the people we serve through the ministries of the church and the things that we do individually. The more clearly we see everyone as beloved children of God, the more we will be in tune with the ways the Holy Spirit wants to lead us to love and serve them. Nauman ties prayer to gratitude and gratitude to service. He writes this, gratitude releases us from the bonds of obligation and prepares us to offer ourselves freely and fully for the work of the kingdom. So if we ground our stewardship of our time, talent, and financial giving in prayer and in gratitude, we will find that we are no longer bound by the fear of scarcity. Thankfulness for all that God gives us inspires us to give of our resources more freely and to commit ourselves fully to the work that God has given us to do. Finally, communion and community are the goals of true stewardship. 
by making our pledges and inviting others to do so. We are not asking, or sorry, we are asking people to get on board with the work of this community of Christians, the people of St. Michael's Episcopal Church in Noblesville, Indiana. The idea is not to have people sign their cards and be done with it. The hope is the real possibility of friendship and community as we labor together. Those who pledge again this year are renewing their commitment to St. Michael's. And those who pledge for the first time or at a renewed higher level are signing on to the ministries here and also the relationships here. As you have been asked to consider your pledge over the last few weeks, the request has been more than trying to fill budgetary needs. Obviously, that is a key component of any stewardship campaign. But the deeper ask has been an invitation to get on board with the work that God is doing here in this church and the, and the work that God wants to do through this church. Working together, all of you can help one another keep awake and be prepared for when God shows up here at St. Michael's. It may not be a smooth ride. The sleepy bridesmaids have shown us that. It may feel like we're waiting for a long time for God to act. But through prayer, gratitude, and community, St. Michael's Episcopal Church can be ready for when the bridegroom comes. And then, when he does, you will enter into the wedding banquet and bring along with you many new friends to join the celebration. Amen. Friends, at this time, we're going to have a brief musical interlude during which you can fill out your pledge cards if you haven't done so already. And when you are prepared, bring them to the altar and place them in the offering plate. That also includes any offerings you're bringing today for usual. And uh, once everyone has done that, uh, we will say a prayer of blessing over them and then continue with the service as normal. All things come from thee, O Lord, and from thine own have we given thee. Gracious God, we ask your blessing upon these gifts, that they would be of use in your kingdom and a blessing to the people here and those that they will minister to. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand and proclaim the words of our faith as found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. 
God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being to the Father, with whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Because we have been fed and called and our lives joined forever in Christ, we unite our voices in prayer saying, Lord, hear our prayer for the wisdom to know the difference between the word of God and our own words, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, for all nations, for each country's leaders and people, for Joe Biden, our president, Eric, our governor, and Chris, our mayor, that peace and cooperation will be our common goal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the church, that it may be a faithful witness and that maintaining unity in the bond of peace, we may know what it means to have one Lord, one faith and one baptism. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember St. James Vincennes, Miss Mary Theobald, Senior Warden, the Reverend Mary Becker Deacon. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people in need, that each person's hunger may be satisfied, each person's pain relieved. For those who have asked for our prayers, especially Grant Cook, Paige Sexton, Heather Duchess, Ken Bush, Becky Seiler, Emily Baker, Tom Glassborn, Mike Byers, Lydia Wente, Mike Grenier, Pat Graham, Gabriel Wright, Kristen Deitman, Jamie Purvis, Joe Bates, Leroy Ward. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those serving in the military, Nam Cook, Caleb Garrett, Tommy Harris, Ken Morrison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us gathered here may have recreation and refreshment this Sunday and every Sunday. We pray for Ellen Chafflin and those celebrating birthdays, and we pray for those celebrating anniversaries. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each Sabbath brings us closer to the health and wholesomeness of God's reign. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dearly departed who have passed from this world into the world yet to come, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Together, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercies, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, in the world we have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ. Mighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I'm terrible. Good morning, St. Michael's. Please be seated for a moment uh, for a couple brief announcements before we continue on with our worship service. First, I want to extend a big and hearty thank you to Father Jason Fortner, his wife Shelby. Jason has, Father Jason has been working with the Vesh for several, several weeks, um, actually about a month or two now at this point, um, helping to organize and coordinate and get everything ready for this new Consecration Sunday celebration. So thank you for being with us this morning. As part of our celebration, of course, is the celebratory meal that will be happening immediately following the service downstairs. So we will have a prayer of blessing the food um, after the post-communion prayer. Um, our Warden Lori, there you are, um, has asked me to make an announcement um, about Good Samaritan, um, that there are two families that we are in the process of um, looking for donations for, um, for Thanksgiving. So we are looking for donations of turkeys, those turkeys? We're looking for Thanksgiving meal items. So more information about that is in the narthex. If you're able to donate, please do so. Um, the only other announcement um, to be made this morning is regarding diocesan convention, which took place yesterday, um, which of course, just as we as a congregation meet once a year to do the business of the church, we do the same thing as a diocese. Um, and I've asked our delegates um, this year, Nancy Kinsey and Lori, um, to give a quick little recap about what took place yesterday to keep us all informed about what's going on. Um, good morning. Um, I was privileged to be a delegate yesterday with Lori uh, to the convention. Actually, I went Friday afternoon too for part of those sessions. So it's really quite an experience. I think it's very interesting for all of us to see the, the work of our diocese and to see all that they're doing. We often don't hear about that on a day-to-day -day here at church, but it was quite rewarding to hear all that was going on. And I think there was, what, about 100, 150 people? Not sure we got a final count, but uh, quite a good-sized crowd at St. Paul's down there at uh, Kessler and 31. And I just wanted to give you a little idea of what we did. Uh, on Friday, it was just more or less, there was a keynote speaker, and then there was um, some sessions afterwards. And the keynote speaker was a lady by the name of Cole Arthur Riley. And I think she gave us some wonderful words. She also spoke again on um, uh, Saturday morning, so everybody got a chance to hear her then, too. She's a writer and a poet. She was an author for the New York Times bestseller, and she's written a book called This Here Flesh, Spirit spirituality, liberation, and the stories that make us. Um, her writing has been featured in the Atlantic, the Boston Globe, and the Washington Post. And she's a creator of Black Liturgy. She's got a book coming out in January also. And um, it's a space that integrates spiritual practice with Black emotion, Black literature, 
and the Black Body and a project of the Center for Dignity and Contemplation where she serves as a curator. Um, Bishop Jennifer, when she introduced her yesterday, called her maybe an everyday prophet uh, among us. So a couple of her quotes were, we need to love our bodies and often are giving too much. If we are not in our bodies, then someone else is. And we are trained to neglect our bodies and black people are taught to deny their bodies based on their history of slavery and oppression. Um, the other session that I attended on Saturday or on Friday was uh, yoga, chair yoga. Um, I had a little trouble with my uh, registration, so I didn't get to get in on some of the other sessions and they filled up quickly. So I went to one that still had a chair, which was chair yoga. So that was quite, that <laughs> And it was good. It was uh, part of that rest, because the theme was rest and liberation was the theme of the, uh, of the convention. So that was quite interesting. Then on Saturday was the business part. And so part of this consisted of, of voting on nominees to the diocesan office. Uh, there was a standing committee, the disciplinary board, the commission on ministry, Wakehorse board, executive council. And Father TJ was elected to a three-year term onto the executive council and as a co-convener for our neighborhood meetings in for a one-year term. And that um, used to be our old deaneries. Some of us that have been around a while knew that that used to be called deaneries. Um, then we voted on proposed changes to the canons which was mostly changes in wording to fit today's operations. And then there was one resolution that um, was to receive the table as a mission congregation. Um, reports came from, was the next order business and they uh, covered racial justice and education team, the reunification discernment, which is the combining of, of the two dioceses. And one of the messages that they wanted clearly to uh, convey was that this is a slow paced process. It's nothing that's going to happen overnight and that they are planning to have some um, listening sessions starting in January. So, um, and that we all can share it actually. So they're going to be, I guess, locally in some of the neighborhoods. And then we had um, reports from uh, youth Ministry, the Mission Strategy, the Global Mission, and Waycross, and then our Providence Five people. Then the, we winded up the day with the Treasures Report, and then we voted on the proposed budget for 2024. Saw some familiar faces that some of us may know. One was Father Bob Decker. I spoke with him quite a bit on um, Friday. Uh, we had lunch with Whitney Smith that some of us remember from being here when he was going for the diaconate. And then, of course, um, Deacon Kathy Scott was there, and then the four of us. <laughs> so anyways, it was a very welcoming and wonderful experience. So I think anybody should consider going for next year. So anybody else have things they'd like to add in to what we Okay, very good. Oh, one other thing I was going to tell you, there's a packet with that we were given yesterday that has like the nominations and the people that ran for offices, the proposed um, amendments to the canons and those types of things, and then the budget at the very back. I'm going to see if we can't post that someplace. And then there's also a thing about the book of the lady that spoke, that's you know, the book that's coming out in January, and we'll see if we can't put these on the bulletin board for anybody to take a look through if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Thank you to both of our delegates for being there and for being here. It was fun. It was a good experience. If you have any additional questions about what happened at convention, um, you can either ask myself, Nancy, or Lori, or it can be found on the Episcopal um, and the Diocesan website. Finally, a big thank you to everybody who has participated in the stewardship campaign um, today and in general for everybody who has donated of themselves whatever resources God has placed within your hands and in your care, be it time, talent, treasure. Um, the generosity of this community is what allows us to continue the ministry that God has given us to do. So big thank you to all of you. And we hope that your giving is a way of building your relationship with God and deepening your spirituality and your spiritual practice. So thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. And before time you made ready the creation, your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the choir of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You look with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. The night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, he gave thanks to you, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves, a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. By Christ, in the fullness of time, brings of all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation the feast of the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Behold the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Beat on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. We also give you thanks and praise, O Lord, for the food that we are about to receive downstairs to celebrate this new consecration Sunday. Bless all the hands that have been passed through in order to reach our tables. Bless all those who will help clean up afterwards. And may it strengthen our spirits, souls, and bodies through the work you have placed before us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. May the wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be the hands and heart of Christ in this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.